Hey, Ben. How are you? Good. What did you think of the game today? Very good. How did you think Zach Hyman played today? Good. I think he plays pretty good. Thanks, Ben. <laughs> you your name right there. Did you see the right? You see all the fans on the other side? All the fans. Wow. Look at that. They're all cheering for you. Uh, I know who the MVP of tonight was for sure. Absolutely, without a doubt. And you should have seen our dressing room after the game. Man, that was the most juice I've seen in our dressing room in a long time. And I'll tell you what, uh, it's a pretty special night. Yes, it most certainly was. Five-year-old Ben Stelter stealing a million hearts last night. Bravo to Ben and his family. Bravo to the organization and the players who gave them a day they will never forget. Our hearts are with this young man and his family as he continues his battle. Welcome to Got Your Back, brought to you by DLR Vinyl Products. Nobody puts in wood windows or siding anymore. Why build a wood fence or deck? Do it once with high-quality, maintenance-free vinyl. Call my brothers Rick or Rob at DLR Vinyl in Calgary and Edmonton. Today on the show, exercising the demons from Dallas. Well, the Oilers grabbed a lead and hung on to this one. Struds and I will break it down for Park Mazda. Darren Dreger stops by, courtesy Bell Van Construction, while Duthie is laying on a beach somewhere. Eh, we'll call him a game-time decision. And in our DeBoer's Who's Got Your Back segment, Jermaine Franklin, Sports Center host and all-time beauty, tells us a tale. Presented by DLR Vinyl Products, this is Got Your Back. Yes, what an emotional night it was as we welcome in Jason Strudwick. Struds, uh, I imagine as a player you were part of a few nights like that where they come in and uh, just make somebody's day and night so special. And I don't know about you, buddy, but uh, I was a little choked up watching that last night. Ben Stelter and his family, uh, just what a night and what a kid and what a great job by the Oilers. It was a fantastic moment. And, you know, I really applaud the organization and whoever made this connection for them. Um, you know, I was there with my youngest son and, uh, you know, and they, there was two times at the national anthem, obviously when he was front and center. And then they also recognized him midway through the game. And I gave my son a couple extra little squeezes and hugs there. I think everyone did with tears in their eyes. So, you know, you just, I love that uh, they, they, they created that moment for him and it didn't end just at the pregame. They had him in, you know, afterwards. Uh, and th those are special moments. And uh, when I played, I'd have some pretty, special interactions with with families that needed help at that time and and um it, it means a lot to them but i think also it's, it's it's just important for everyone to take a deep breath and and, and see there's a lot of things going on outside of hockey uh, that there have much more meaning than a win or loss last night yeah i love the way they brought him out for post game too zach hyman yeah. was just yeah. i mean zach hyman the guy that writes children's books so you can imagine <laughs> what that moment would have meant to, to zach hyman and just to bring people up to speed in march of 2021 uh, ben was diagnosed with glioblastoma, which is a brain tumor. He had surgery that month to remove it, uh, went, underwent four rounds of chemo and 30 sessions of uh, radiation. Then in December, uh, his tumor returned and he had another surgery uh, to remove it. And he's about to start another round of radiation sessions next week. So the Oilers brought him and his family in. Uh, he's five years old. Um, you know, his uh, sisters, Dylan and Emerson, were there as well, uh, just just an amazing night and uh, a great job by the organization. I, you know, I was chatting with Jack Michaels, our good friend from Sportsnet after the game. And I could tell I, I had to watch the game here last night in the office. And, you know, I could tell Jack was getting choked up in the broadcast booth. And I asked him and he said, oh, yeah, 100 percent. That was that was emotional for everybody. And he was in the room after the game. They gave him the helmet. Uh, <laughs> just just so cool to see. Hey? And then the, for the fans to be cheering for him the way they were. Yeah, you know, I think we, you know, there's a lot of made about it before. Like we talked on uh, with us on the Gregor show, and got people prepped, right? And so everyone understood. You know, there there are, there are some moments that I think are bigger than others, and that was a huge one. And I, I think just especially now coming out of what we're coming out of, um, you know, there's a real good energy in that building, and uh, you know, hopefully Ben was able to uh, soak some of that up. Our thoughts are with him and his entire family. All right, let's head out to the basement in Kelowna. And bring in Zuby. I think that's what we're going to go with for now. Chris Sabunia uh, for a nickname. <laughs> How you doing, pal? What's going on in Kelowna? How's the weather out there? 
Doing well. Weather's good. Yesterday was, I don't know, I think they said 11 or 12 and sunny during the day. So uh, got the kids out to the park. Uh, maybe too late in the day. That didn't end well. We had a we had a spill. Bruno had a spill, but uh, he's oh a tough little guy. He bounced back and he'll be good. Any today, blood? Sure. Uh, a little scrape on his nose. <laughs> he was wearing a helmet. He was on his scooter and he was doing great on the scooter. And then he's like, he wanted to run to keep up with the other kids. He made it about five steps and had a, a little road rash on his face, but... <laughs> nice strutty yeah, how do you do when your right. kids get uh if your kids ever get lit up my son one time he fell off his bike he was maybe about six years old fell off his bike and i saw it happen and i went and i immediately knew he was bleeding and i went yeah. sprinting down the road towards him but the thing is and you'll identify with this strutz i had just bought a new lululemon shirt it was like <laughs> the day before yeah. so i'm in this brand new lululemon yeah. So I go sprinting down the road. I peeled off my tarp because I didn't want to get blood oh, all over it. And I oh. threw it. So I pick up my kid and shirtless, you know, like Jeez. I carry my bleeding child down the street into the house shirtless. It was, I feel like it was incredibly heroic and amazing. My neighbors no. didn't agree. <laughs> no. Yeah. They don't need to see you running down the street without a shirt on. It's a bloody nose. You know, it wasn't like you had to give a car an oil change. <laughs> You heroically yeah. saved your hundred dollar investment. Yes. Yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. Do you guys? Uh, you guys check out the soccer last night, boy. Canada. I mean, great to see all those Canadian fans go all the way to Costa Rica, and they, they came up just a little bit short. Uh, but uh, oh, man, the refereeing in soccer—it just kills me. It kills me to dive in sometimes, and the game hinges on that. Yeah, I, I don't understand that part of it. And I, that's that's the part of the I can't fully get invested in soccer. I mean, there are other sports that have challenges. I know that you know hockey or football. There are challenges at times, baseball, but that's one where the diving it's so clear and so obvious, and yet it seems to be accepted that it's called. And uh, that's you know whatever. But I, I've never been this invested in uh, in Canadian soccer. The ladies, you know, they've had me for many years since Christy Sinclair played as a, a teenager here in the Commonwealth many years ago. Uh, but now the guys have got me hooked too. Uh, so it's great. It's great to see them. And I'm sure they'll get it done. Now, what is it this weekend? They get another chance to punch their ticket Sunday against the number 62 ranked squad versus Jamaica. What'd you think of the uh, Mark Anthony K getting booted out there? Zuby? Uh, that's a pretty tough, you know, that's a tough call. That's a tough one to take. Uh, barely brushed the guy and it got a pretty big reaction. I, I don't understand. Maybe it was explained. I, I only watched highlights um, why they could VAR the the first the first yellow card but not that one yeah I, right. I don't get that it's frustrating i agree that's what i think for a lot of canadians makes getting really invested in soccer difficult to do um but i i mean yeah oh man i'm pulling for these guys that hey things could things could be worse we could be italy right italy world powerhouse oh. knocked out by north macedonia of all of all uh, places uh last yeah, night no so question. still i still have a ton of faith in the guys a lot of uh Lots still to go here. They're going to get it done, and I'll be super excited to watch them in Qatar. Yeah, looking to qualify for the World Cup for the first time in a long time. All right, time to talk some hockey. Zuby, go back into your little fist there. So long, Time fellas. to pull your magic trip. Woo! Back to the basement you go. <laughs> <laughs> Fix that picture. What's with Dewey Cox on the ground? Put Dewey back up on the wall. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you got, yeah, he threw a picture down on the ground there. He yeah. decorated and then tore it apart. All right, Strutty, <laughs> let's get to the game last night. Time for the breakdown brought to you by Park Mazda, where the newly redesigned 2022 CX-5 has arrived. Check out the brand new all-wheel drive sport design trim with its turbocharged engine and see the available colors and trims in stock at parkmazda.ca. Love the gang down at Park Mazda here in Sherwood Park. All right, let's start with the new guys. Uh, Kulak and Broussard, I think they're both going to be regulars. They're going to be every night guys. And so they should be. Uh, but I want to start with Kulak in particular. I was impressed. I really liked the mobility and I thought he showed poise in a number of instances. And, uh, boy, talk about building trust with your coaching staff on night number one. Right out the gate. I had the ISO cam on and I was at the game. I had the ISO cam on probably for the first five or six shifts. And I think it was the second shift. Uh, the Sharks were breaking out of their zone uh, up the left, up the left wing. And you know, was, uh, he was on the other side, Kulak. And normally you kind of just skate backwards. Well, Kulak, with his such great mobility, he skated at the, 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 the puck carrier and broke that up before they got to the red line. So that takes, a, well, A, a tremendous amount of courage. 
and belief in yourself. Be great mobility. And even you see Tyson Berry's like, what the hell is this guy doing? But yeah. it was a great play. And I, I love that moment. Um, but but by Kulak, very mobile guy, gets around really confident with the puck. Uh, so really, really nice uh pickup and a, and a great start for him. You know, you can really kind of see where he fits in. And uh, bigger than Russell, I think he skates better than Russell. Yeah. Um, you know, it, Russell's a little different player, but beside Barry, that mobility, man, I think that's going to be a really nice tandem. Well, and he's used to playing with, you know, kind of skilled offensive-minded defensemen. Right. I mean, I wouldn't call Petrie all of those things, but he played a lot of minutes with Jeff Petrie uh, in Montreal. And, and with that speed, it feels like he's going to be able to be stabilizing because he can get there in time to make up for mistakes. I was interested, Struds, in how – his minutes would compare to Duncan Keith's minutes uh, at even strength because that sends a signal. Like Ken Holland told me after they traded for him that they viewed him as a top four guy. Well, as you scan the minutes, Duncan Keith at even strength last night, 1555, and Brett Kulak, 1802. Mm -hmm. That's the difference between a second pairing guy and a third pairing guy. So you see the way that he was used in that game last night. And as we go to our Average Joe's sound box, Average Joe's next to Home Depot on Baseline Road in Sherwood Park, uh, listen to Jay Woodcroft talk about his first night with this defenseman and think about it. This is about building confidence between a new player and a coach. He played a good game. He's a, obviously a very good skater. He helped our puck movement on the back end. And um, I just felt comfortable with him on the ice tonight. Just felt comfortable with him on the ice tonight. That's a good sign for Kulak. It's really good. You know, usually as a defenseman, you want to have um, as many low event shifts as possible, especially kind of from the red line down. And and that builds that trust or that comfort that, that Woodcroft's talking about. And he did that. You know, I, I I thought there were many times where he kind of got the puck in a tough spot and settled it down and settled the play down. And that is, you need that because there are really, you know, intense moments in the game. If you can bring that that temperature down, and he did. So really good first initial uh, jump for him. Um, again, his defending off the rush a few times was was elite. I was really, really impressed with that. And, um, you know, especially when you look at maybe some of the people he might play it against, the more he can shut that down and get Barry where he's best is a red line in. So let's move to Derek Broussard. I was unsure what to expect with the combination of him and Ryan Nugent Hopkins. They're both lighter players um, and they play a similar style in some ways. I would call Ryan Nugent Hopkins game elegant. I would say the way he plays, he, he kind of darts around out there. Uh, you know, he'll get in and grind if he has to, but I wondered if there would be enough heaviness on that line. I thought, yes, a did a good job digging in the corners. And if that line's going to work, they're going to need that from pool But I mean, instantaneous chemistry between these two struts. You know, I didn't expect Broussard to be on that line. I, I honestly thought that they would to, to kind of, to follow up what you said, I thought it might be Fogel. Fogel on that line, Fogel and Pilly uh on the outside of uh, News. Just have a little bit heavier line, maybe a bit of a, a checking line, if you will. Checking maybe is a bit antiquated, but, you know, just just a, that type of a look. Broussard found him in there, and uh, he set up News twice. Like, not with average yeah. chances, like grade A shooting chances. He, he scored, scored a goal. Now, a lot of that, I think, is due because News just drive the net. Um, but they're, they're both smart players, and they, they, they work well together, and they both kind of know where to get those open spots. Um, and they did a good job. Pooley RV, I think, is really the guy that has to kind of really help those two. Um, and on Nuge's first chance set up by Broussard, it was he got open. He or sorry, yeah. Pooley RV go gets that puck and finds him. So Pooley RV has to understand his role on the line. Not that he can't be a shooter or a guy that sets people up, but he's really got to be that bigger body that gets to the corners, gets to the front yeah. of the net, and is disruptive. So those guys can dart in and be smart. Because listen, San Jose Sharks. I don't know if half those guys on that team have ever sold a jersey, an NHL jersey, right? I, I don't know who they are, and I, I was looking them up on Hockey DB, and and they're a very, they're, it's a very minor league looking team in my it, what I see right now. Um, so when they move into heavier games like Saturday night against Calgary, what's that going to look like? You know, are, they, are those guys going to be able to do the same things? But there are, they're going to need their help from Pugliarvi to make that happen. I know you're not talking about Noah Gregor, by the way, because that, no. uh, you know. <laughs> well, there's about 50, kidding, you know, you know what? there was a ton of Noah Gregor jerseys in there, and I love yeah. it. You know, I saw, what I a saw great Greg's night for them. In. I yeah. loved it. It was a great night, like your first game in the NHL at home, and uh, I saw a lot of his friends and friend, family, yeah. and I, I love that moment. Like anyone, I wish everyone could feel that, have a nephew or son or whatever uh, in the NHL, and you can go watch them play for the first time at home. 
Yeah, no question. Um, okay, Kano Yamamoto stays hot. Uh, he just keeps piling in the goals. I think he's got seven in his last eight games. Top power play unit struggles out there. So Yamamoto and company hop off the bench. The second unit go hard to the net, and they score. It was a combination skill, grit, mucking it up. Uh, just the perfect kind of second power play unit goal, and it's Kyler Yamamoto again. Yeah, I actually, I think I'm going to give the credit for this one to Ryan McLeod. Ryan McLeod decides he's going to take on a guy and use his speed. And I want to see him do that more. I want to see him decide that I'm going to try to get that edge and I'm going to cut around that D and try to get to the net. Well, he does that. And I think it was Brent Burns, if I remember correctly. And he just about gets him. And then Brent Burns kind of stumbles but gets the puck. And now because of that attacking mentality from uh, from the big guy, uh, McLeod, there's a free puck there. Guy's out of position and and – uh, Yamamoto comes in and taps it between the wickets, but yeah. that is a that's an aggressive decision by McLeod and something you need to see him do more often. Lower that shoulder, drive the net. Now I know he was still 15, 20 feet from the net, but man, that's a that's a great play, and I love that decision by him. Okay, so you're on the topic of McLeod, and I agree with you. That was a really good play, mm -hmm. but there was a learning moment later on in this yeah. game. So your team blew a lead last time around. <laughs> you've you've got it, gone through a nice sequence, and you've got a lead to play with. This is when you need to bring your most responsible game and to make good, solid decisions. That sequence by Ryan McLeod in the defensive zone was one of the worst I've ever seen from him. Mm -hmm. You know, puck on the half wall. It's sitting right there for him. He hesitates, doesn't grab it. Puck gets turned over. He's standing still, doesn't pick up his man, gets beat to the high slot, and a huge goal swinging the momentum back San Jose's way. You cannot have that happen. There are certain mistakes you can make as a young player, a mistake of complacency and lack of awareness and attention to defensive detail. Those aren't mistakes you can make, and he got pulled off that line immediately after. Yeah, in-game maturity, right? Um, you know, we've been talking about it. Um, we've saw it against Dallas. They had, you know, a couple, couple like it was two minutes where they just made bad decisions, and you cannot happen. And honestly, it's not acceptable on a team that has aspirations of being deep in the playoffs. So they, they right move. You know, I'm sure that's been a, a something I've talked about in meetings time and time again the last 48 hours. So they they pull them off the line. They put Fogel and Cassian in there, but. After they go older, score that second goal head goal. Guess who gets back on the ice? And I love yeah. that. I love that move by Woodcroft. It's like, hey man, you know, it's not that we don't still want you or need you on this team, but you need to know that if you can't be counted on in those critical moments, you will not be going on the ice. So he got back out there after that goal. The funny thing is, he had another moment after he got back on where he kind of I lost saw. the puck at the first shift. Line. And I'm like, buddy, what are you doing? So yeah. that's another sit down. That's a sit down with the player and saying, listen, we we need you to grow with us. But that that those two plays are no longer acceptable. Yeah. So it, it, you know, it's it's a it's a tough learning night for a young player. Luckily, it didn't affect the outcome for the Oilers. But those are not acceptable. Those plays so, are not acceptable. So talk to me about Jay Woodcroft's strategy there. It's it's the carrot and the stick, right? He needed to yeah. use the stick, but then he put the carrot out there. McLeod went out and made another mistake. You know, he made up for it with a great effort. You know, he dove mm -hmm. hard at the blue line, second effort. But um, did you experience getting benched and left for dead for the rest of the night versus mm -hmm. getting benched, but then getting the pat on the shoulder and the opportunity to, to dig yourself out a little bit? That's two very different experiences for a player. And I would suggest that ended up turning into a positive for Ryan McLeod. Yeah, I mean, I coached by Mike Keenan, so yeah, I got I got benched after one shift, <laughs> one shift in LA. I'll never forget the forum. I played one shift, and he said, "Go sit down beside the goalie, uh, the other side of the goalie." And I sat there for the whole game. <laughs> he made you go on the other yeah. side of the tender. And then he said, oh. to me, "He goes after the game. He said, don't ever have another bad first shift.'" And I and I after you know I had the message received. I think honestly, it was it was loaded in the chamber. He was going to do that no matter what. Uh, that game but um and then i did have times where guys would pull me over and say hey you can't make that play and then you, you get back out there the second i think is more valuable you know after a while the first yeah. one you're kind of just laughing on the bench but for mcleod it, you know it's something that'll keep in his mind that that you have to understand the time of the game the score of the game who you're out against um what this means like all those things it's it's not good enough just you're not in peewee just wheeling around skating fast and trying to score you have to understand that the, the moments of the game the orders didn't understand it against dallas most of the guys got it last night or against um the sharks 
Uh, McLeod missed that. He missed that moment, but he was he was taken out and put back out. And now I think it's it's something he will not forget. Shocker, he will remember that moment for oh, all yeah. the rest of the year. I remember my benching moment. There were many of them, but the one that was brutal. <laughs> and I, I listen, I played a bit of junior hockey. I'm not trying to swap stories with you, but I, I took two we were in Spokane and I took two penalties. And like I was a borderline, shouldn't have even been in the lineup kind of player. Yeah. And one of them was in the offensive zone. And I'm sitting in the penalty box and I'm looking across the bench at my coach and he's shaking his head like this. And he's pointing down the end of the bench <laughs> like this. As I'm in the penalty box, I'm Allow sitting it. there and he's like, yeah, you're, you're going down there. Mm -hmm. And so during the penalty kill, the other spoke cleared it and it came in in the penalty box and it bounced off the glass and hit me in the head. And I hear, Hey, and I look and he's clapping on the bench. <laughs> my coach is clapping when I got hit with the puck. And Allow so when it. I skated Allow back it. to the bench, he goes, Hey, Reesh, go have a seat in the useless section with Skurlac. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. That's a tough, that's a tough oh, section yeah, to be a yeah. part of. Tough one. And by the way, I'm sorry, Rob Skurlac. He was our tough guy. He was yeah, an amazing was. guy. He was a good player and an honest player, and we both took a beating from, from Shaq every once in a while. Anyways, uh, lesson learned for Ryan McLeod. Uh, quickly, Zach Hyman's penalty kill shift ignited an entire building. That right there in one shift, that encapsulates – everything important that the Oilers signed in Zach Hyman, doesn't it? Couldn't have said it better myself. When you sign a guy to that kind of longevity or a length of a contract, you need moments. You need moments that are separated from other players. And that was a defining moment for Zach Hyman in that game last night. Um, you know, gets the puck, kind of gets knocked off it, fights to get it back, carries it out of the zone all the way down to his own end. And it ragged, you know, you ragged in maybe 15, 20, 25 seconds, but that that moment, he didn't score a goal. I don't think he registered a shot, a hit, a takeaway, nothing. But that ignites a bench. That ignites a bench and gets everyone fired up because you know what? The next group going out for their penalty kill, they don't want to let him down. They want to keep the same high level. So that is the exact thing that you bring in Zach Hyman for. Yeah, he's going to score goals, but he leads by example. And that energy and effort he put towards that, that, that penalty kill, I loved it. The play standing ovation. Standing ovation for a penalty kill in which he got really no credit for no stats. Yeah, what, a, what an amazing night overall for Zach Hyman. He, you know, the performance that he had, the penalty kill that he had, and then post game, you know, when he brought Ben out, um, yeah. all of the good that Zach Hyman brings uh, was on display last night. Uh, he was asked after the game about, you know, the quality of the team's play heading into the playoffs. Is it more important to, I think Spec asked, is it more important where you finish or the way you're playing as we go to our uh, average Joe sound box? And, you know, Hyman really feels it's important to get your game in right shape, uh, regardless of the position. Like, obviously, you want home ice advantage, but I think. It's, it's about how you play going down the stretch and how you play in the playoffs that, that matters most and, and just building confidence for the, uh, for the group. Oilers playing great hockey on home ice right now, Stretty. I mean, that to build the confidence that they're building right now, is it six in a row on home ice, I think? And, mm -hmm. you know, for them to be clicking at home the way they are, home has to be a place you feel comfortable going to the playoffs, doesn't it? Well, that first period, they were all over the Sharks. The score was 0-0. Zero, zero. Now, I wouldn't say they had a ton of good chances, but their effort and the way they grinded it out and they were all over them, just first to pucks and, and you know, give the Sharks credit. They weathered the storm, but that, that was a long storm. That wasn't a 20 minute. -er. So I think Hyman's 100% right. You want to be playing your, your best version of your hockey. It, whether you're first, second, third or fourth, it doesn't matter because once you get in the playoffs, you have to beat the team you're playing against. And if your game is really good in a good place, then you're, you're set. If you're first and your game is in a good place, it doesn't matter. You're going to get booted out. So the Oilers are trending in the right direction. You know, the penalty kill, solid last night. The power play, really nice goal. Lots of movement. Um, you know, those are two areas. Not so much the power play, but the penalty kill for me has been a huge issue. Um, yeah. The two new guys jumped in. They look good. New, just healthy. Um, you know, there's there a lot of reason to be optimistic. But you know, now you look ahead, Calgary, another chance to prove yourself um, and kind of it's, this isn't a statement game for the rest of the league, in my opinion, Shocker. What it is, it's a statement for yourself. To know that when you walk into a building, you should be carrying yourself with a swagger that a guy like Evander Kane does. Another good start for Mike Smith as well. Yeah, I feel like I'm getting better and better, to be honest. I, I felt like tonight I was, uh, you know, pretty solid. I didn't like either goal. Just got to get out of position a little bit. But I felt like my game was, was letting pucks come to me more tonight and feel more, more comfortable every game that I've been in there. So I think the last few I felt like my game's coming along and I want to be playing my best hockey this time of the year. And I feel like it's trending in the right direction. Yeah, I love a guy, a goalie, that'll get in front of the media and 
offer up the fact that he didn't like a couple of the goals against him. Mm-hmm. You know, Mike Smith's a competitor, and he wasn't – I mean, nobody was criticizing him. He offered that up. This is multiple decent starts for Mike Smith in a row here. And in a situation study that I believe needs to be best man up, I think they need to consider Smith against Calgary. What about you? Yeah, that's an interesting one. You know, I'm not I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'm quite there yet. I think I'm still alternating. Um, you know, Mike Mike's game is coming. There's no doubt about it. And he he, he had some adventures though, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. I think you know what? I just I, I think you know, both guys are feeling pretty good about themselves, although maybe Miko's wobbled a little bit, but um I mean it is his old team, I guess, and Smith. I I I'd probably go to Miko and not because of his way Smith played or didn't play. I think just alternate again. I, I, I would kind of look at it that way. Give him time to just kind of digest that game, maybe get it back on the ice with his, his goalie coach because it is coming. It, it, it is coming, and there's seems to be a lot more calmness to his game. Um, but make no mistake about it. They, they are The team is you know expecting Mike Smith to get back to where he can be a high level uh, ASAP, and he's got another, whatever, 17 games to get it going, as well as Miko, and he always has Skinner in, in, in the back pocket if needed was a decent night from Capo Kakinen, and that was a night where Oilers fans could have been frustrated because if Mike Smith wouldn't have played well and a goalie who was available on deadline day mm-hmm. did, uh, that would have been a bunch of noise in Ken Holland's ear. But a solid win for the Edmonton Oilers. Their solid play on home ice continues. Things are trending in the right direction heading into Calgary for the Battle of Alberta. Great breakdown, Struds. Appreciate it, my friend. That was the breakdown brought to you by Park Mazda, your dealer for life in Sherwood Park off of Y Road. Visit parkmazda.ca. All right, you're going to stick around for another segment, Struddy? Yeah, I'll do it. Let's do it. Yeah, there's no guarantee we're going to get James Duffy because so Trade Center ends and he gets on a plane so fast. So he's on a beach somewhere. Now he texts me and was like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll join you. You know, you're sure, sure. Uh, I, I, he's a game time decision. I'm kind of questioning whether he's going to show up or not, but we'll definitely check in with Darren Dreger, courtesy Bell Van Construction. You are listening to Got Your Back, presented by DLR Vinyl Products. Hey, Strutty, question for you. Have you ever tried putting in your own fence? I sure have. Between uh, digging the posts, uh, mixing up cement and, and uh, digging the holes, it's absolute killer. It's brutal on the back. Well, listen, what if I told you you could put in a fence without having to dig a hole or mix any concrete? I'd be much more likely to come over and help you out. Yeah, well, you're not the first guy I would call, but thank <laughs> yeah. you for that. Listen, my brother's company, DLR Vinyl Products, they've come up with a system where you can actually put high quality vinyl fence in the ground without having to dig a hole, without having to mix any concrete. They can teach do it yourselfers how to do it. And they can also work with contractors who might be looking to start installing vinyl. It's super high quality product. The great thing about it is that it has fantastic longevity. You put it in, you don't have to worry about staining or sanding or anything like that. I've been lucky enough, Strutty, they put in multiple fences in my different yards and they've built me three decks. (laughs) I have totally abused the fact that my family is in the fencing and decking business, but it's great product. Uh, Give Rob a call in Calgary or Rick a call here in Edmonton. This is a company my dad started. It's a family business. I'm super proud of it. And I'm very proud that they are our title sponsors. That's DLR Vinyl Products in Edmonton and Calgary. Hey, it's Ryan Rashawn. While many are feeling the sting of inventory shortages, Park Mazda has you covered. They've got new Mazdas arriving every month, including the redesigned 22 CX-5 in whatever color you're looking for. They've also got a huge selection of used vehicles with new arrivals every week and some of the most competitive interest rates on cars, trucks, SUVs, and more. Park Mazda, your dealer for life in Sherwood Park, off Y Road. Schedule a test drive at parkmazda.ca. Oh, oh, oh. Breakfast. You guys want a little breakfast this morning? Breakfast, breakfast. Oh my God. Breakfast buffet wow. here at Grace Bakeway. What a guy. Tell me if you start to lose me, all right? Yeah, uh, we'll we're starting to know. lose you. Yeah, yeah. We're trying to lose you. <laughs> oh, oh, <man. laughs> I get this guy. I love it. <laughs> this is my dedication to this podcast. 
Time now for Drager and Duffy, or is it Duffy and Drager? I'm not sure. We're still determining that. Brought to you by Bell Van Construction, specializing in the design, planning, and construction of restaurants, office spaces, professional clinics, and retail spaces. Visit bellvanconstruction.com. James Duffy, where are you? Can you hear us? Oh, yeah, I can hear you fine. I'm in, uh, in beautiful Turks and Caicos, taking a little uh, post trade center you know just a few days to recoup after carrying drager for nine hours oh, i think he came on like three times yeah i think i got something but we'll get back to you later uh, <laughs> so i had to carry that show so now i reward myself with a little uh, should i do a live swim oh 100 percent, you should tarp you off <laughs> this is a uh, grace bay beach uh Clothing optional? Is that what it is there, James? Clothing optional? Like this, honestly, this is the slimiest thing I've ever done going to podcasts like this. I don't even like to advertise to them on the beach while everybody's working hard in Canada. But yeah. again, dedication to the podcast, bro. So, hey, just to be clear here, fellas, you know, I'm not suggesting that James Duffy and his family don't deserve a vacation. James worked hard uh, on Monday, <laughs> trade deadline day. Right. This is at least the fifth time that he's been to Turks and Caicos <laughs> since Christmas. Right. So let's not make that this to true. be this big that is once. Not true. Well, yeah, how many not times true. have you been yeah. there in the last six months? Second. I was there in January for a week, and now I'm here again. This, <laughs> and I won't be there again. I'll be back to dedicating myself to the, yeah. to the craft of broadcasting. The hey, Strutty. Strutty, if you made that kind of money as an NHL player, you'd be able to do the same thing. That's right. Why Instead, you're tenor? grinding it out. I'd have a permatan like he does, right? He's just the guy. That's why he has to go down there. TSN pays for him to go out of that permatan. I am not like a like tanner. I, a poor I'm man, George Hamilton. That's what he is. No <laughs> whitest line. guy. I'm always the whitest guy in Turks and Caicos. I'm heavy. Okay. I go with the SP60. Yeah. <laughs> uh, could you find a bigger pair of sunglasses or those uh, Again, it's part like of, blue blockers? You know, very sen- I have very sensitive eyes. Oh, and... So I wear big sunglasses. I'm not about, you see, Ryan, I'm different. I'm not about the look. I'm not trying to impress anybody down here. I'm just trying to keep protected. And uh, I'm no fashionista. We right. believe you. Okay, listen. We believe we're you're, not not, gonna... you're not about style. <laughs> yeah. We're not going to keep you for long today because we know you got some tanning you got to get done. The only thing I want to hear from you is what your opinion is of Brad Marchand yesterday. If folks didn't see it, he came out with his new breakfast cereal. What's it called? March? Marsh Crunch, March and uh, he's been mercilessly hawking this thing worse than I've been mercilessly hawking this podcast. He wow, wait a about- second, yeah. wait a second. Worse. What? Yeah, guilty as charged. Anyway, Marshawn was asked about the cereal uh, post-game last night. The face looking good. <laughs> Can I say I'm that? Pretty- no. If I can, I'm sorry. I swear. Face licking good. I mean, you that's know, the good. past just being pasty. Yeah. I, I think that's pre- – I hadn't even seen that. I spent last evening just trying to find a bar that had the Canada-Costa Rica game on. Uh, but I I think that's pretty funny. If you can be – there's a little self-deprecation in there, which you don't often see from him, so I thought that was pretty good. And what you meant was you had your people trying to find you a bar so that you could go watch the Canada game. That's what you meant. Yeah, whatever. Uh, we'll see all right. Me, whatever. James, we're going to let you go, man. You can, uh, you can bounce well, I, off I this. Do a segment. I have a no, lot no, of, no. I and, a lot of notes on the Oilers game last night. No, because <laughs> I know I if we hit the – one shift in the third oh, – okay. If we hit the seven-minute mark, I have to pay you, so we're cutting this off right now. So <laughs> Wait Zuby, a second. I told my wife the only reason I was doing it is because I was getting paid. Oh, well, like there's Mar- been a miscommunication. I'm like Lich. I'm only here. <laughs> <laughs> so I still get paid. You, you need right. the time to go wash those sunglasses. That's an all-day project. <laughs> I'm more interested in what's going right. on behind James. Yeah. All right. Zuby, I don't know if you could boot him. Time to get Duthie out of here. This is, He's on the clock now. This I don't want to go. Expensive. I just want to say I'm, I'm going to stay on here for another eight minutes so I get paid. <laughs> okay, but you're not on camera you, anymore. You guys kick me out. I don't care. <laughs> I'm going to do okay. a soliloquy. Huh. Okay, sounds Whatever good, buddy. He's going to filibuster. He's going to filibuster. about the Oilers win last night. Uh, <laughs> Lay off the cards. Lay off the cards. This segment. Take your shirt off. 
Oh, this segment is a train wreck. We're going to be looking for a new sponsor here soon if this uh, if this mayhem keeps up. Uh, uh, Dregs, uh, you guys did insider trading yesterday. You talked uh, a little bit about uh, about the Board of Governors meeting that's coming up. I don't know. Did we lose Dregs there? Oh, no, there he is. He's back. Uh, Board of Governors set to go next week. Uh, this Kucherov thing, I wonder how many general managers you think are fired up enough about this to maybe elicit some change. Well, they've been talking about it for so long. Uh, you know, it, we present things as breaking news sometimes that aren't always breaking news. I mean, the news value for me is the fact that the GMs are going to formally discuss it. But as has been articulated by Jeff Jackson and Alan Walsh, two very prominent player agents, um, talk about it all you want. But you do have to negotiate <clears throat> and get approval from the Players Association before you can exact anything related to the collective bargaining agreement. But, you know, I think that we can all understand uh, why it's worthy of discussion. Like in the minds of more than a few uh, general managers, the, the salary cap in relation to the playoffs and the fact it doesn't exist uh, has been abused over time, right? So there's at least an appetite to, uh, to discuss, okay, well, what would a, a cap extension look like in the playoffs? So this is entry level stuff. I'm not sure that they'll come out of it with a recommendation, but for the group to bring it forward means that they're they're planning on doing something in the future. Dregs, what about from the players? You know, you heard some players kind of push back about it last year uh, with with the Kucherov situation. Do you think mm -hmm. the players would would have or have a voice strong enough and or a willingness to use their voice? To push back on it? I would think so. Uh, Scruddy, as you know, though, the, the player of today isn't as engaged or willing to get out there publicly. There are a handful, but not like 10, 15 years ago, right? Where you had a, a, a large group of veteran players. If they didn't like something, they just flat out said they didn't like it and they pushed with the Players Association. That becomes less and less. Now it's the powerful agents that get more involved and act as the voice um i mean i i the salary cap is an issue right i mean it, it's been an issue for a long time it's the reason why trade deadline has become mm, less interesting to be fair in terms of the actual trades and you know that's why duffy makes the money he does is because he's like the circus master on monday <laughs> you know with all the shenanigans going on outside of actual trading and and whatnot um Look, I mean, the good news is the salary cap is increasing by a bit. It should go up to 82.5 next year. I, I think that there would be pushback from the players and the players' association if, you know, the same sort of structure was employed for the playoffs. So you could have as many players, you know, organizationally around you for the playoffs as you want. It would just mean that the coaching staff and the manager would have to put a roster on the ice for that playoff game that would comply to an 82.5 salary cap well if you're a team like tampa bay or toronto or vegas or any cap team edmonton for heaven's sake you know how is that advantageous you know i so for me it's almost a finger wag in the direction of the national hockey league because if the managers are bringing it forward and saying that okay this has been abused historically we've got to tighten it up and we've got to extend it into the playoffs isn't that basically saying to the nhl well you've allowed the Kucherov situation to develop into what it did. You know, you've got the Mark Stone and, and, and everything going on in Vegas, and we've seen it with other clubs. So I don't know. I, I'm happy that it's going to be discussed because it's going to give us something to chew on for a couple of days. But there are all sorts of, of areas that we can see will be pushed back, including that from the players. Dregs, let's bring it uh, back to Toronto and the Maple Leafs. How do you think they're feeling right now? I mean, it was it was a great game the other night. Lots yeah. of skill on display, man. Some of that back and forth. I think there was one sequence where you had, you know, you had Hughes going up the ice full speed in one direction, then Marner comes back the other direction yeah. full speed. All kinds of skill on display. You know, how do you think that the Leafs are feeling about where their team is at? You look at the standings; it's tight all around them. Boston with a big win. Yeah. Uh, you think they're uptight or do you think they're feeling good about where they're at? I, I think they're feeling good. Um, you know, they were pretty happy with how that game went and, and not just because they, they won. The New Jersey Devils are a team that, 
is going to make some noise in the very near future. It's a run and gun type of style that they like to play. Um, you know, they got good goaltending in Peter Morasic, and their goaltending has been sketchy. So <clears throat> I feel like they think that it's something that they can build off of. But you're right. When you look at that Atlantic division, man, um, it's an arms race at the top. You know, we often look at, <coughs> excuse me, the two Florida teams uh, and think that, well, they're the, 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 the measure of success. Well, yeah, I guess, but Toronto is, is right there neck and neck. I mean, Florida's at the top, but right there neck and neck with Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay's been a bit of a funk other than last night. And the Boston Bruins are not getting enough credit. They're just not. So uh, Toronto isn't nervous, but I think they're very mindful of where they're at. But, you know, again, you know, just dating back to the GM meetings here for a moment, one more time there'll be a conversation on what the playoff matrix looks like, right? Every March yeah. meeting we get into that. But I feel like it applies now more than ever because when you look at the setup of, of the first round of the playoffs, I mean, <clears throat> there are going to be good teams that are bounced in the first round. And, you know, who pays the price for that? Not just the club that gets eliminated in first round, but the fans. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we should want to see these good teams, if not great teams, go as deep as they can go, but it won't go anywhere. Struddy, how are you feeling about the uh, the Leafs prospects and their situation? We know you're, uh, you're, you're, you're big among Leaf fans. Oh, I love the Leaf. I love the Leaf fans, and they love me. And you know, it's funny, Drake. You and all your buddies over there at uh, TSN, uh, like O Dog and Noodles and Hayes, they love having me on. The Oilers are struggling. The Leafs are rolling. Yeah, I haven't heard from yeah. them in three weeks. I haven't had a text, a tweet, a homing pigeon, nothing. Like I love it. I love it because I know that they're in their head. I, I'm going to send them a note today. Say, I'm available anytime yeah. for your show to talk because. See, I see it as a situation that the Leafs are in a tough spot. They're in a really, they're in a, they're in a really tough spot. They have a really tough first round matchup, a, in a yeah. really tough second round matchup, and if they get bounced early, they're still a good team. Like they're, they're still a good team, but they weren't better than other teams in their division. So I, I think they're in a really difficult spot, and I feel for Kyle Dewis because he's done a good job for the most part. But man, they, they might just be bested. And, yeah. uh, you know, it keeps me off the airwaves in Toronto. Maybe that's their plan. Well, probably. But look, and, and we don't have to disclose what was exactly being discussed. Uh, I did the Ottawa Senators game last night <clears throat> against Winnipeg with Noodles. Did yeah. you perhaps get a text from Noodles last night about <laughs> a certain goal that may have been scored? Yeah. <laughs> against? Anyway, we yeah. won't get into the details because yeah. I don't want to get Noodles I don't want to get noodles. No, I want to know now. Uh, uh, I mean, that's fine. I think it's a it's a back and forth between Strutty and and uh, and and noodles. But yeah, he, uh, we had a we had a good chuckle. He said, "This is going to get Strutty for sure." Oh, he yeah. loves it. He loves chirping me. He's from here, but he I think he's yeah. slowly becoming a maple leaf guy. I wouldn't be surprised if he has a maple leaf logo tattooed on his shoulder. <laughs> he might. He might. <laughs> Or oh, lanes. this yeah, is big. <laughs> yeah. So I had to drop that in there, Dregs. Felt, felt like you were dropping a scoop on us, so I had to play yeah. that in there. Yeah. Um, just just quickly about uh, the Wild. You know, it's it's not usual that, or I, I feel it's not always that a, a GM kind of puts his team in the mold of the way he played, and Billy Garen's done that. Would, would that be a team you think that is, is making people fearful to play uh, in the first or second round? Yeah, I think so. You know, if, if you're the St. Louis Blues – um, and you're looking at that division now. Uh, are you concerned? You know, they they improved modestly on their back end. They added Nick Letty in St. Louis. But, you know, for a, for a general manager who vowed that he was likely going to be quiet, and I'm talking about Billy Garen, he was anything but quiet. And he added some real significant pieces. And, you know, that could be just rec recognition of, you know, how his team struggled probably in the three weeks leading up to the trade deadline. I mean, they were coasting for so long. He didn't want to upset the chemistry. He really liked the group. And then things started to wobble a little bit. And, you know, that included his goaltending, even though, you know, they make the Marc-Andre Fleury trade and then Cam Talbot comes in right after and stands on his lid. I, I mean, I think the, the Minnesota Wild are a formidable team. I, I do. I, you know, when I look at that Western Conference, uh, you know, we can look at, at who the obvious favorites are, but I'm not overlooking Minnesota. You know, Minnesota and Calgary, for me, are the two teams that I think are going to be most interesting. Colorado, okay, I get it. It's obvious. We know what the firepower is. And despite what 
Daryl Sutter talks about it's not going to be an eight day <laughs> waste of time. <laughs> like, you know, whoever makes that locks in on that wild card spot is going to have a chance. But, you know, most improved, I guess we'll see how it plays out. Often when you make the, the changes that a team like Minnesota made at the deadline, it doesn't always work, does it? In fact, more often than not, it doesn't work. It doesn't pan out the way you would hope, but he improved his club. So they're going to be a challenge. I love the counter punching here from Cam Talbot that we're seeing. You know, you want to bring yeah, in yeah. Fleury, fine. Yeah. That guy awesome. is a gamer and he is a competitor, and that's going to serve them well if that Agreed. is a healthy competition. Dregs, have a great time in Florida. You're going to miss me down there. You got what? Well, you got Gino Reda instead of me this time? Yeah. I mean, I mean, there'll be parts that I miss. Um, <laughs> there's some similarities. I mean, you know, he likes to be heard throughout the conversation and seldom <laughs> listens. Very similar to you. Um, yeah, yeah, beyond that, we'll have a good time. I'm going in early, fellas. I, I'm going in actually Saturday. Oh, so, yeah. You yeah. and James on a beach this weekend then, hey? You guys going to send each other your uh, your tanning <laughs> photos? Yeah. yeah, Nobody wants to see that for me. Dregs, thanks a lot, pal. We'll check in with you from the Board of Governors next week. Uh, or GMs, too. Yeah, whatever. GMs, yeah. yeah. Right. Double. GM meeting, same same place. All I know is you're going to have the meatball yeah. at the Italian place for sure, right? No question about that, guys. All, All right, right, have a good weekend. Yeah, Everybody. see you, pal. That was Dregs and Duthy, or maybe just we'll say Dregs today, because <laughs> if I say Duthy, I probably got to pay him. Brought to you by Belvan Construction. Coming up next, we ask Jermaine Franklin, our good friend, the question, who's got your back? Brought to you by DeBoers. Get yourself straightened out and decked out for the new golf season at DeBoers. You're listening to Got Your Back. Presented by DLR Vinyl Products. Hey, Dregs took off pretty quick, eh? He just bolted right out of there. He's gone. He's gone. If you're a business owner looking for a general contractor to build or renovate your business, no matter how big or small, Bell Van Construction should be your first call. Specializing in the design, planning, and construction of restaurants, office spaces, professional clinics, and retail spaces, Bell Van can assist you from start to finish. Learn more by going to bellvanconstruction.com. Folks, golf season is just around the corner, and I don't know about you, but I am some kind of fired up over it. It's the perfect time to get yourself fitted for new clubs or some great new apparel. Well, DeBoers has you covered for all of it. Their facility is first class with amazing TrackMan technology in their simulators and top-of-the-field fitting specialists. You can order now for spring delivery, and they've also got a bunch of new 22 apparel for you to go check out. It's a fantastic group down there at DeBoers. The shop has a great positive feel. I highly recommend you check them out on the corner of 53rd Street and 99th Avenue. DeBoers, helping you play better golf since 1999. Average Joe's Sports Bar in Sherwood Park has proudly served the community and supported minor sports in the area for almost 20 years. It's a great gathering place for sports fans. Average Joe's has massive big screen TVs, comfortable seating, and a friendly staff waiting to make your experience anything but average. Come check it out on Baseline Road, right next to Home Depot, or make a reservation by calling 780-417-1113. That's Average Joe's on Baseline Road in Sherwood Park. All right, time now for Who's Got Your Back, brought to you by DeBoers, helping you play better golf, your local golf shop, for the last 23 years. And for today's segment, we head out to Toronto, Ontario, to catch up with one of the nicest human beings you will ever meet anywhere End of discussion. Jermaine Franklin and I broke into TSN together about 18 years ago. He was the Calgary Bureau Chief for a long, long time before the mothership in Toronto flew him out, gave him a test run on the anchor desk and realized, man, is he ever good at this? And they pulled him out there. They stole him away from us, but he has been killing it on the Sports Center desk ever since. We catch up with Jermaine Franklin and hear his story, courtesy DeBoers. It's been way too long since we've had a chance to get caught up. So uh, I'm super happy we get a chance to do this, man. How the heck are you? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. I can't complain. You know, uh, the GTA, as they call it, Toronto area is treating me really good. Really enjoying my time on the desk. 
Um, it's hard to believe. Well, it's funny. I don't want to say it's hard to believe that it's already been a year and a half because in so what? many different respects, it feels honestly, in so many different respects, it feels like it's been 10 years because of the pandemic that we've been going through. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, it's, uh, it's been 18 months. It feels like it's gone by so quick. So it's been, it's been a good adjustment. Family's happy and I can't complain one iota. What's a typical shift for you? Like, let's say you're doing the, I don't know, pick a show, the 1am or something. Give me, just give me yeah. a quick, like run through of your shift, like a 30 second run through of a sports center anchor shift. So the, the shift, uh, if I'm doing the one o'clock show, usually show up, uh, uh, show up around nine, but of course that's 9 PM. But of course you're doing a little bit of research uh, at home before you uh, head into the office and then you head into the, the well the studio slash newsroom and then you prep from there uh, watching sports all over the place writing your on cans getting the getting the the synopsis and, and the scripts of the of all the sports that are going on that night and the one thing about uh, the 1 a.m show that I'll tell you guys that a lot of people may not know is uh, we get a little bit of a chance to um prepare more because it's later which means sometimes we get to record a segment or two but that also means because it's the last show there can be no mistakes so if we make mistakes right. on live television we got to stay behind and make sure we correct every every major yeah. mistake that we make so sometimes you think we get out of there by two in the morning sometimes it's not till three or four yeah. in the morning i remember uh, I, but, came out, I came out to anchor sports center uh, a number of times years ago and i was doing a show with muddy brian mudrick our yeah. good friend and i didn't realize that if you screw up in the 1 a.m show you yeah. pinch everybody <laughs> the whole crew and like they want to get that thing done and so we're sitting on the desk together and I was all like, Mr. New, you know, I hadn't done, a, I mean, I've done tons of anchoring yeah. in my career, but yeah. you know, we're, we're working sports desk together <laughs> or sports center together. And so I screwed up and I like made some comment, like self-deprecating comment after I screwed up because, you know, you want to make light of it or whatever. And yeah. Brian shot me this look like, dude, shut up. Like just when you, <laughs> like, what you got to do when you screw up, you got to pause. So there's an edit point and then you just keep going. Right. Well, I didn't exactly. know that. I just, I just rambled my way right through it. I'm like, oh, that wasn't good enough. Or I got to do better. Hey, Brian, or something. And he looks at me like, shut up. And it's funny you mentioned that, right? Because it's a different kind of pressure, right? When it's live TV oh, yeah. and you screw up, no big deal. You get through it, which I love that part of it. But when it's, when you got to, when you got to correct your mistakes, then you, the producer and everybody's like, you know what? We got to stay later. That means 20 people are staying that's overtime. That's whatever that's best. And I'm like, Ooh, the business part of it. Ooh, sorry, oh. guys. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to be that poodle that sits on the desk and you're like, I want to do it again. I didn't like my read. I want to do it again. Read tape, read tape. Yeah. So, uh, Hey, listen, pal, uh, we love to hear stories from people about a time in their life where, where somebody had their back. And so, uh, I don't know if anything resonates for you right away or not, but, uh, you know, uh, what, what comes to mind with that whole principle? Yeah. Um, thinking about what times where people have my back, I almost feel like, uh, uh, um, when I'm, whenever I'm part of a team, I think that, uh, that's when it, that, or when I feel that I'm part of a team, that's when I have felt the most support. Um, and I thought of a spot, like when I was coming up in the business and, uh, had, had about, Three or four part-time jobs, honestly, Reese. Uh, about three or four part-time jobs. One, uh, one um, uh, volunteer with Rogers Television, and and I was working part-time for the Fan 590 uh, Sports Radio, doing their sports cruiser. But there was this one spot. It was called Toronto Star Television, and um, just struggling our way, making making my way, struggling through the business, and always work behind the scenes at Toronto Star Television, doing floor directing, working the cameras, um, even in the control room once in a while, helping out. And uh, but the reason why I think about having uh, people having my back is because everybody everybody knew that it was a stage for them, and everybody wanted to help each other reach the next step. And uh, Toronto Star Television was in one young street in the Toronto Star building, floor nine. I'll never forget it. And there was a list of people that really helped me. And I, and I helped them, I'd like to think, but they really helped me 
get to the next step. And this is in the, this is basically in 2000, 2001. Um, so names like uh, Mike, Mike Wonder, uh, Brad Goodspeed, there's a big Colin and a little Colin and Karen Sakon. I, I mentioned those names because I was allowed to take equipment out of Toronto Star. And because I had my, uh, because I had my passes, media passes, two league practices, Raptors practices, and Jays games, because I had those passes through my Fan 590, they came with me and shot stand-ups for me in order to improve my game on camera. Uh, oh. Mike Wonder especially. So oh. Mike Wonder had my back. I mentioned the Collins, uh, Big Colin. He had my back putting my demo tape together. I was just slicing stuff. He's like, okay, let me help you out. And we put the demo tape together that um, you and I both know him pretty well. Uh, Mark Millier ended up seeing and ended up hiring me. So oh, um, in terms of guidance and people having your back, when you're struggling to make rent, when you're working for free, when you're literally making like seven bucks an hour, living in one of the most expensive cities in North America, let alone Canada, um, those guys had my back in it and I'll never forget them. That's massive. And what a great break it created for you. And Jermaine, you've done a hell of a great job with that break. You earned it, my friend. You're doing wonderful work. And uh, thank you for that story. And buddy, keep it up, man. It's so good to see. You. Oh, appreciate it, Reese. Great stuff from my good friend, Jermaine Franklin. By the way, I think he used to be a bouncer too. Uh, Jermaine, as nice as he is, not a guy you ever want to mess with. If I ever had to uh, get into one, uh, Jermaine Franklin would probably be the first guy at TSN I would pick to have my back. I have to think about that. Maybe we'll have to do some sort of a poll, figure out which of the TSN folks would be the best one to drag into an alley uh, if you found yourself in a little bit of trouble. Awesome stuff. Thanks, Jermaine. Uh, remember, it's an interactive show. We want to hear from you as well. If you've got a great story about a time in your life where someone stepped up for you, Big story, small story, can be funny, can be heavy, whatever. We want to hear them. Email them to us, gybpod at gmail.com. That's our average Joe's inbox at gybpod at gmail.com. You can be part of Who's Got Your Back, brought to you by DeBoers. And uh, we got some swag coming in, and we are going to start doing some giveaways. So if you start contributing and we use your emails, we'll do a draw of some sort. We can start firing some who some Got Your Back swag out the door. All right, that's going to do it. Episode four in the books. I'm loving this. It's tons of fun. And thank you so much for tuning in. Big thanks to all of our sponsors. Uh, our title sponsor, my brother's company, DLR Vinyl Products. Of course, Mitch and the gang over at Park Mazda, Belvan Construction here in Edmonton, and DeBoer's Golf Shop. And of course, Average Joe's Sports Bar in Sherwood Park. This has been Got Your Back, presented by DLR Vinyl Products. Have a great day, everybody.